Hello class! Today we will share information on how to write a resume. First, let us cover some of the basic steps discussed in the writing resume chapter in your textbook. Then I will go over the details. Your resume is a document that tries to sell your skills, knowledge, and expertise in the job market. Your resume is a gateway to potential employment. As a marketing document that sells your candidacy, your resume should have a format that is pleasing to read, efficient in its use of the English language, and very concise. Although resumes may range from one to three pages, generally speaking, they are about one or two pages in length. Your resume must be clear, concise, and error-free. While writing your resume, it is important to keep your purpose and general goals in mind. Your resume should make an exceptional first impression. It should quantify or in other words, share examples and details of the strengths, responsibilities, abilities and accomplishments you list. It should express that you are well suited for the job. Your resume should represent you when you are not there and be able to get you an interview. It should display your command to communicate the written word. Your resume should be quickly able to show what exactly you do or have done in the past. The more you quantify your accomplishments using specific details, the more your abilities will be understood. For example, Stating that you worked in sales on your resume does not provide specific proof of your skills. Adding more details and quantifying the experience would provide the unique details. For example, if you worked in the school library and the number of lost books declined by 20%, this is worth mentioning. However, never lie. Do not fake numbers or details. Be honest. Generally speaking, there are two types of resumes, the chronological resume and the functional skills resume. However, the chronological resume is the most commonly used format. Let us take a look at a resume formatted in chronological order. The chronological resume has two main sections, the employment and experience section and the education section. Information in these sections is provided in reverse chronological order, starting with the most recent position or school and working backwards. Experience is presented under headings by job title, company location, and dates of employment. A brief explanation of each task is stated under the item. Add bullets as needed. Information about education is also presented in reverse chronological order. Here, if you have a course or a project that relates to the job you are seeking, add that information as well. If there are any elements that would help make your case stronger, you can add that information in a block on its own. Here, for example, it lists the major work-related projects the individual has completed. Next, you will list your skills, activities, and awards. This information can be presented in columns or just like the rest of the resume in bulleted lists. Lastly, provide your references. Do not say references will be provided upon request. It is recommended that you provide your references. Contact your references and let them know that you are adding them as references to your resume beforehand. In contrast to the chronological resume, the functional skills resume centers around the well-developed skills and achievements section in which skills are organized into categories. This type of resume includes an employment experience section and an education section. 
The focus, however, is kept on skills and experience rather than on chronological work history. Regardless of what type of resume you write, there are some design elements that will always apply. For example, use tables to align sections, then hide the borders to create a neat presentation. Choose a standard 10 to 12 point font such as Times New Roman. Use the same font in your resume and your cover letter to create coherence. Choose a font that looks serious and professional and is easy to read. When describing work experience and possibly education, include bullet points. Start your bullet with an action verb describing a skill or achievement. Here is a list of some commonly used action verbs. Follow the action verb with the details of that skill or achievement and then describe the positive impact of your achievement. For example, provided, which is a verb, friendly customer focused service, the details, leading to a 15% improvement in customer satisfaction and loyalty, the results. Avoid relying on graphics or ornate design features. Too many design features may make the resume look busy. Be strategic and consistent in your use of capitalization, bold, italics, punctuation, and underlining. Place more space between sections than within a section to create visual groupings of information. This way your reader will be able to easily distinguish between the key sections of your resume and between the items in each section. Write in sentence fragments that begin with active verbs and leave out sentence subjects. For for example, instead of saying, I eliminated the duplication of paperwork in my department by streamlining procedures, say, eliminated paperwork duplication in a struggling department by streamlining procedures. Place your name at the top of the resume to make it obvious to the readers that you are the subject of each work. Avoid filler words or fluff that do not show meaningful skills. For example, words like team player, results oriented, fast paced, or self motivated. If you must use these phrases, find concrete examples to back them up. Make sure your resume is completely error free. Proofread your resume several times, use spell check, and ask an exceptional proofreader to review it for you. No matter how prestigious your high school was, do not include that information in the resume. Do not provide any unrelated details, for example, listing video gameplay for software design jobs, etc. Unless you're applying overseas, in the North American context, you will never provide your personal information like your height, weight, or marital status. Also, do not include your picture. Now, let us break down the resume and look at the common pieces that go into a resume, regardless of what style you choose. First is the header. Your resume header should include four items. Your full name, your address, email address, phone number, and possibly your professional website or LinkedIn page address. If your first name is difficult to pronounce, you could include your nickname in quotation marks or parentheses. Names are typically bolded and centered on the page but aligning your name to the right or left is also appropriate depending on your chosen template or style. You may include your school address or your permanent home address or both. Most recruiters prefer both because they then can send or receive information from both. 
As we discussed in our professional emails lectures, Choose a professional email address, not something funky like greeneyes2 at gmail.com. Include only one phone number, the one you are sure to answer, and record a professional voicemail in case the employer calls. If you decide to add an objective statement to the resume, it should be highly specific in stating what you are looking for and what you have to contribute. It should also be you-centered, showing what you can do for the company in no more than two sentences. Next is the education section. This section usually appears before the experience section. But as you start gaining more experience with time, you may choose to flip the two sections in order to emphasize the information that is more important to a particular employer. In the education section, it is standard to include your GPA, typically if it is 3.0 or better, along with your expected graduation date, majors and minors, you may include your overall GPA or you may decide to list the GPA of your ma major. However, if your GPA is not your strength, you can eliminate that information. If you attended only one college, only that college should be listed in this section. If if you transferred from another college, you should list both schools. The first school you list will be the current school you're attending followed by the previous school. Here you also have the option of including relevant courses that prepared you for the job you are seeking and any special accomplishments related to school, like projects, offices held, service and awards or scholarships. Next is the employment section. This section should highlight the most relevant jobs you have held and downplay less significant experiences. This section is the most important section of your resume. Recruiters and employers often look for past work experience as a predictor of future work experience. The traditional method of listing your work experience is in reverse chronological order, just like you did in the education section list your most recent job experience first. Include the name of the company, the city and state, and if outside the United States, the country. Provide the years of employment. If you are still employed with the company, provide present as the end date. Next, add three to seven bullets describing your responsibilities and the results of your work depending on your years of experience. Use bullet points for clarity and emphasis. List each employment you have held by providing the information we just discussed. After the employment section, you will add information related to the skills and certifications you might like to share. Again, all this information should be relevant and honest. In this section, you can include information like computer skills, language skills, study abroad experience, community service, licenses, and certifications, etc. Lastly, you will list your references. As mentioned before, do not say references furnished upon request. Provide the references. List only the names of the people who have agreed to be on your reference list. If reference information cannot be included within one page limit, you can provide these on a separate page. Provide the references name their company and title, relationship to you, for example, is the individual your manager, peer, vendor, and so forth. Lastly, add the references contact information, including email address and phone number. Be sure to notify those who have agreed to serve as references 
that they might be receiving a call or email from your potential employer. Most of you are new to this game. You have just finished high school and joined college. You might feel like you do not have enough information to add to your resume. Give this another thought. Brainstorm your skills, accomplishments, and knowledge. What did you accomplish at work, school, or a volunteer position? What skills have you learned? What would you tell a friend or family member you were proud of having achieved there? What sort of technical advice do friends and family members seek from you? Start writing down key terms and action verbs that describe your experiences and accomplishments. Use the action verb list I shared earlier in this lecture. 